All right, so we're in the process of, uh, we're in my greenhouse, and this is February. We just had a big snowfall. Uh, the greenhouse is built out of old sliding glass door units that were all donated or salvaged. And we t they were double pane, so we took them apart to make single pane, and we got twice as many. There's a gap as big as my finger right there. Uh, so this greenhouse is very, there's lots of cracks in it. It doesn't really, uh, it's not easy to heat. Well, it functions almost more as a windbreak so that we can then cover the plants with row cover. So if we put row cover on the plants, just outdoors, it would blow away or the snow would come on top of it and pack it down. So this is like a, a giant hoop and then we still cover plants inside. It gets down to maybe 25 degrees in this greenhouse. I don't think it's ever gone lower than that. It is backed into the wall, so that helps. But we did have a unit here, not with the idea of heating the whole greenhouse, but with the idea of providing bottom heat for germinating some plants in the spring, particularly. And then we also thought it might uh, possibly be utilized in the summertime for drying herbs when we're not having much sun. Uh, we never really worked out a way to do that, but there's still hope. So this is like a basic cob bench that people build these in in cold areas all around the world in Scandinavia but especially Russia I'm familiar with China where it would be called a Kong uh, so if you're heating your house with wood the way you do is heat up a big cob bench that's your uh, thermal mass so to speak in China that's like a bed or, or a place where somebody can sit or several people uh, usually it's the most honored person, the grandparents, get to sleep on the Kong because that's the warmest place in the house. But the whole thing is radiating heat to keep the house warm. Uh, so in this case we were trying to use it to provide bottom heat for germinating plants. So it was basically there was a firebox here, like a rocket stove type firebox, with the air coming in underneath and the kindling on top, and that pumped the, into here. The stovepipe went around, curved back here, came back to here and forward and, and at this point it's over the top of this one. So as soon as you start the fire here it heats up here and establishes the draft. It's not always easy to get smoke to go horizontally for that big distance but as soon as you have a, a little bit of a draft established, so the minute you light your fire you're heating up this as well to suck the smoke on out. And that part of it worked fine. Uh, it was here for, I guess, seven or eight years, and then it slowly, we hadn't tamped it adequately underneath, and slowly the front kept sinking and sinking, and now it's fallen in. Uh, but that does allow you to see what it looked like. There's actually a fair amount of rocks and rubble packed in here as well. And now we're just trying to decide if we want to rebuild it or how we want to rebuild it. As you can see, the stovepipe had pretty much corroded away, but it doesn't really matter once the cob is packed in around there. It, we could have even done this with cardboard tubes, probably, and then just fired it off, because uh, you really just need the channel. And yeah, I guess that's about but what I have to say about it, and when we decide what we're going to do here, we might rebuild it or we might just set this up as a place to germinate flats in the spring, like step it back. I'm kind of leaning towards that. I was thinking about putting these water barrels for a back wall. Let's see, we might do that. So all the way along the back wall here is drums uh, filled with dirt, and we use them as planters for uh, things that for one reason or another uh, are going to do better in here than outdoors. So there's, that might mean that they're not quite hardy. Uh, we keep some zone 7 plants in here. In the case of the Ma Huang, the ephedra there, it's plenty hardy. It comes from Tibet, but it really doesn't like winter wet. A lot of things that come from very high altitudes are perfectly hardy, but, but they're used to the ground being frozen when it's cold 
uh, so they don't have any resistance to rotting. So ginseng, for instance, uh, is plenty hardy, but if the soil is, is, gets like muddy, it'll just rot away in the wintertime. Same problem with a lot of the tap-rooted uh, echinacea plants. They'll just rot away if the ground is wet. So you need a very good drainage. So that's why that's in here. But a number of these drums have actually ended up having uh, things that are too weedy for me to want to plant them in the garden, like sweet grass or uh, mugwort, a number of really invasive plants, so invasive that I just don't want to plant them in my garden. I'm afraid they'll escape, uh, not from seed, but they're just so invasive by runners. So the barrels are handy for those, that category of plants as well. Thank you.